Hey, Akan, how's it going? Good to speak to you today. Hi, Matt. Good, good. Thank you. What about you? I'm doing fantastic. You, uh, you just moved from Europe to the U.S., if I remember correctly. Where are you at right now? Yes, I'm in San Francisco, the heart of Silicon Valley. So excited to be here and uh, network with a lot of people in the industry. Yeah, it's really awesome. I've been all over the world and uh, the U.S. in every corner. And I lived in California for 10 years and never made it out to San Francisco. So hopefully not too long, I'll be able to join you out there. Yeah, that would be great. It's definitely a great city to be in, for sure. So we were getting together today just to talk about profitability monitoring. And, you know, I never even heard this term until maybe two years ago. I've been working with the insurance sector for three and a half years as more of a, a vendor consultant advisor type role. And profitability monitoring wasn't even something that I was aware of until you know, about two years ago. So I'd be curious um, you know, to start off with, for anybody like myself two years ago who maybe is familiar with insurance, maybe works in insurance, but hasn't come across profitability monitoring specifically, uh, how would you describe it for you know, your average uh, individual? especially in this post-pandemic and inflation period, now all the organizations are trying to focus on profitable premium growth. So as they grow their pre premium, they, also, they always want to maintain their profitability or even improve it if they can. And in order to achieve that pr uh, profitable premium growth, there's a need to be able to understand and analyze the performance of the existing portfolio for different products and focus on only on the profitable segments of customers when they actually sell market uh, or play with those products. And at the end, what profitability monitoring is, whether you use machine learning or any other technology or not, uh, you identify those profitable and loss-making customer segments across your book of business, and then take the right actions to achieve that profitable growth. So profitability monitoring gives you those specific small segments whether they are profitable or not. And then you can basically take any action with that. And these actions could be like, you can apply targeted marketing strategies to attract profitable customers. You can streamline your new business submissions uh, by declining some loss-making segments. Or if you're doing like cross-sell alpha campaigns, you can only do such campaigns for profitable business, for profitable customers, so that you actually achieve that profitable growth that basically everyone is talking about in the past two years. So then as, if I'm thinking about it, to, to simplify all that, great, uh, great answer and explanation, by the way. So it's essentially doing business smarter as an insurer and more efficiently. So you're getting better results out of the same or even reduced inputs. Exactly. Like the way we, the way everybody sees it right now, like profitability monitoring or profitability detection is kind of the core of every uh, digital transformation model because everyone wants to achieve that profitable growth. So whatever action you're taking with your organization, with your customers, you always have to consider profitability in order to stay ahead of the market, in order to compete in this market. That, that's something I've been speaking about for many years around the context of AI. Um, you know, if you want to compete, you really got to start implementing this stuff. So not to go off on a tangent, um, but I'd like to you know, think about you know, what are some advantages specifically in leveraging like an ML machine learning type technology within this context around profitability monitoring versus some of the more traditional methods? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, as I said, even though profitability monitoring is new, it's not like uh, insurance carriers did not have any segmentation before or all insurance carriers, all insurance organizations have to have some sort of segmentation in order to apply rating models, in order to do any kind of marketing or sales or even underwriting action. Uh, but in the context of traditional methods, usually what they do is they, uh, they look at the policy types, the different claim and exposure information and create different uh, like macro segments, like five to six segments, maybe 10, maybe 20 segments uh, of profitability and then try to take actions on those. And these are highly rule-based and domain experience-based methods. So it's highly based on the experience of the actuaries, experience of the underwriters when they actually create these segments, or they just use uh, some business rules to actually come up with these segments. What machine learning provides, however, is 
it not only optimizes those existing business schools, but it, it applies some sort of micro segmentation where you actually create hundreds of different segments uh, with different profitable, uh, profitability drivers or loss drivers, different loss ratios. And you can actually take actions on specific segments instead of just having like five to six segments and taking different actions on all of them. Because having macro segments and taking actions of, on them might work, but it's, it's not that precise because the risk dynamics or the customer behavior in each of those big segments might change a lot, uh, might vary a lot from uh, customer to customer. But if you actually do micro segmentation, you can be precise and accurate where you take your actions and actually kind of boost your growth. Well, that's a really interesting metric you said there. You said that traditionally focus on, you know, five to 10 or maybe a few dozen segments, but with machine learning, you can focus on hundred or hundreds of segments. Is that accurate? Exactly, yes. Wow. Okay, so that's like a 10X or more increase there. That's very interesting, I, I didn't know that. Are there any, you know, drawbacks or limitations to machine learning solutions uh, when you're looking at uh, profitability monitoring? Yeah, for sure. Especially like uh, with any machine learning model even, but especially for profitability monitoring, like as I said, as you do micro segmentation, it gets kind of complex. You have these hundreds of segments. So the main drawback in, in any of these deployments is the lack of explainability to the business user. So even if you have the best machine learning model with the best accuracy that can actually predict the profitability behavior of each customer, like for the next five years, if you, cannot under, if you cannot explain it or if uh, to the underwriter, to the salesperson, or the business users cannot understand what is, going behind that, what is going on behind that model, it cannot be used in production. So the lack of explainability definitely makes it very hard in such complex models, in such complex technologies to actually uh, make sure this profitability monitoring with ML uh, is working. Um, and other than that, even if a model is deployed with, with a good amount of explainability so that underwriters can understand what's going on, there is usually a need to kind of retrain the models, redo the models from scratch, because as you know, uh, the customer behavior, the risk behavior keeps changing. The loss drivers change over time frequently, uh, which creates a significant workload for both business users and data scientists as they have to create the models, monitor the models, uh, validate the models with business uh, users. So it also creates kind of a significant workload as you have to redo the models from scratch. So I think everyone is pretty familiar with the large uh, variation in data around just the recent pandemic. And then we've got a potential recession on the horizon, at least being predicted by a lot of the firms and the media. You know, explainability has been something that even before I was in the AI sector uh, been reading about for many years being a large drawback and maybe obstacle to implementation and deployment around different types of AI solutions, most specifically around machine learning. Um, so it's good that you brought that up. Does, does Tazi address any of these challenges um, around explainability or any of the variations in data? Uh, and if so, could you explain maybe a couple of those different points and methods? Yeah, sure. I mean, what TASI provides us at the end inside the machine learning platform, different machine learning solutions in which one of them is profitable to monitoring, but the core of the platform itself is focused on being business usable and being able to continue to learn. So we actually try to address those two challenges the most in the industry because that's what we saw in the industry, more like most of the machine learning projects failed to go into production because of lack of explainability, because of lack of business user validation, and because there's a, usually a significant workload and a significant cost of data scientists in order to retrain the models. And what TASI addresses in these challenges is that uh, TASI provides a business usable explanation to each business user and creates a, creates a bridge between data scientists and business units. So TASI oper operationalizes machine learning models that enable business users to monitor the profitable and loss-making segments across different uh, customer tiers. And then uh, they can take the right action using the right channel and increase their revenue while maintaining their loss ratio. 
So the business users are actually kind of can go into the machine learning platform, uh, provide feedback to the models, and also always have an understanding of the model because they would have a visual interface of the model. They can see what's going on with their profitability with their products. They can uh, provide feedback, as I said. Uh, but the but the main point is you always have some sort of business user explanation right next to a prediction. So you would see that, okay, this segment is profitable because of these specific indicators, because of these reasons. And maybe uh, after working with the business, uh, the, we also create like tailor-made actions, industry tested actions so that they can take uh, with the segments. Other than that, uh, as, the, as you said, I mean, you, you actually brought up a great point. Uh, after the pandemic period, and now that we're, we're actually, uh, we have indicators of recession in the US, uh, the, the changes data is very, very important because it keeps changing every minute, every day. Uh, you never know uh, which customer will actually provide, uh, will, act, will actually submit that exact claim uh, in the future, in the next 12 months. So it, it, it becomes very hard to actually write premium, write business, profitable business uh, for insurance carriers right now. And Tazia tries to address that with continuous learning and dynamic customer segmentation. And what I mean by that is Tazi learns the data as soon as a single data point enters to the system. So instead of actually having to retrain the models after you have like weeks of data ready in a changing environment, Tazi does that instantly in real time. As the data feeds into the Tazi's continuous learning models, Tazi updates the model itself in real time and tries to adapt to that changing environment. And then after uh, actually having conducting some experiments on this, uh, we were able to like double the accuracy uh, with a continuous learning model compared to a batch learning model in a, actually a changing environment. So there's a lot to unpack in what you just went through. I really like that. You said something at the end though that I'd like to hone in on a little bit more. Are there any other specific outcomes that you've seen from a TAZI specific solution being implemented? And could you share a few of those? You know, I'm really one of those who's always, I love the talk about theory and uh, you know the part of the possible, but when you have specific examples about actual outcomes uh, through projects, that's really the most interesting to me because that's where it's proven. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I cannot even talk about an experience with a recent client uh, where, again, we applied profitability monitoring to kind of apply a precise portfolio selection when they're actually trying to come up with their rating optimizations, uh, come up with their price optimizations. And uh, inside the specific deployment, uh, like the situation was that before Tazi, as I said before, they only had five to six segments based on the uh, business type, policy type and whether they had a claim or not uh, in the past year. And then based on these segments, they would use their domain experience. They would look at the, like the weather recession indicators or any other economic indicators, and they would make decisions, uh, many of decisions to those segments and take action with them. But then after Tazi came in, the goal was to actually increase that segmentation and work with the business users or the pricing and underwriting experts uh, to understand profitability in a much precise way and take action so that at the end your revenue or your combined ratios would improve. And what we have done is uh, we have applied our profitability monitoring solution, uh, which actually created around 120, 150 segments of the portfolio, uh, whether they're profitable and loss making. And then what, what we did is the pricing experts or the underwriters went into the platform, looked at the seg look, looked and analyzed different segments and selected segments that need an immediate action and actually, and actually applied segments, uh, applied actions to those segments uh, very easily. Uh, and after that, uh, after waiting, uh, waiting a few weeks and waiting a couple of months to see the results, uh, we were able to see an increase of revenue around 5%, which also kind of led to an improved uh, loss ratio uh, in parallel as well. So this was kind of a, example of a profitability monitoring solution that we have deployed. But I think it's also important to note that like in any of the solutions we deploy, profitability monitoring is the core model we start with. Like uh, we have other solutions such as cross-sell, like predicting the leads that will actually, uh, that have a high likelihood of conversion for a specific uh, cross-sell product. But even in that case, you don't wanna uh, kind of 
create a cross-sell campaign for business that's not profitable. So we run our profitability monitoring solution first. And for the segments that are profitable, uh, they can apply to these predicted cross-sell lead campaigns. So as I said, I mean, even we do this, or maybe sometimes just profitability monitoring on a customer, all of our solutions in insurance specifically always should have profitability monitoring in order to achieve that profitable growth uh, that I talked about uh, in the beginning. That's a really great point. And I love the, the way you kind of explain that where essentially they had a system we built or Tazi built a more accurate, more enhanced, more expansive system, brought in the experts and pretty much just supercharged what they're already doing for within a few months, 5% revenue increase. That's incredible. And that is a really great success case around AI and obviously the credit to Tazi machine learning technology as well. Um, I hope that anyone who listens or watches this learned something. I work here and I learned a handful of things as well. So it's very helpful for me. I've got to imagine it's very informative for anybody else. If somebody wants to get a little bit more in depth or learn anything more about what Tazi is doing, doing uh, in the machine learning space for insurance or just any other industry in general, um, where should they go? Yeah, I mean, I would always just suggest go to our website. We have all of our solutions there, including profitability monitoring. You can research uh, what we do actually there uh, in a much deeper way, and you can find and access our white papers from there. And even if you're more interested, you're always happy to book a call with us, just a quick call to understand your needs, and we'll be there uh, to kind of work together and solve what problem you want to solve, especially in the case of profitability uh, in your company. Awesome. And then if anyone has questions specifically for Hakan, I imagine you're on LinkedIn as well and they can find you there. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Great. Thanks so much, Hakan. Appreciate talking to you as always. And we'll give it a sign. Thank you. so. Thank you so much, Matt. Have a good one. You too.